Okay. So just put the weapons aside. We're just going to do a very brief uh, physical warm up. Okay. So just feet firmly on the ground. Give yourself some weight there, and just wave the body. Wave the body this way. So if you're on the side, basically you're looking for sort of opening up here, and then going down here. So focusing on your spine and your shoulders, hands rolling back this way. Yeah. So this way here. So when you're in this position, really feel that your back is out here. And then when you come to this position, really open up the front here. And then sort of in a kind of a wave. Okay, moving side to side. Again, this is more of an elastic free, free flowing movement. And then really feel that the stretch is really opening up this area here on your body. Okay, you move this way. And up. Okay, bring your shoulder up, shoulder up, bring your shoulder this way. Also feel the neck lengthening. So again, the side of the body should be lengthening in a kind of a free movement. Okay, then just with the elbows back into a spiral. Okay, let the arms go loose. Into the hips. And change directions. Okay, coming to the knee, feet together. If this will go down, stretch back, go down, stretch back, and circles. Change direction. Okay, so go on to your left, let your weight go to your left foot. Okay, and then just come up to your hands and then just circle the, the, the wrists and the ankles at the same time. One direction. Change direction. Okay, go to the other side. Okay, okay, rolling. Okay, not working. That's kind of... Change direction. Okay, coming back. Shoulders, focus on your shoulders now. Opening fully to the back, front. Change direction, front. Okay, lace your hands on your back, stretch. And release. And stretch. And release. And stretch. And then release. Okay, shake your hands out.
arms. Keeping your feet flat on the ground. Okay, go to the legs. Okay, good. Take a breath. Okay. So we'll just begin with some saburi, of course. Okay. So we're going to Kamai. Okay, Kamai. Okay, first saburi, find your back and then just down. Up and down. Up, down. Up, down. Carry on, I need to see what you're doing a little bit. Okay, keep on going. Uh huh. Not bad. Mm. Okay. Okay, good. So there's a, it's, it's kind of interesting because normally, normally when I teach, I actually only teach what I see you guys doing. And this is interesting because I can hardly really see clearly what you're doing. So we're going to try some basic things, which I, I think I see a little bit. The first is, is really trying, the, the main thing is, is that the sword should really come from the swinging of the body. Yeah. Okay. So what I want you to do now is I want you to sort of like have less focus on the arm work. And just come to this point here and then just let the body swing down and just swing down and then try and feel that what's actually happening is this is happening in the body so your structure is <coughs> swinging this way yeah so first to buri, come to the back and then just swing down relax swing down and then basically allow yourself to sort of sink into this position yeah so just let the sword come naturally into an arc there stop at this point and really feel that your weight is dropping into the ground, that you're really in both feet down, yeah? Swing and down. Swing and down. Swing and down. Swing and down. Okay, just keep trying that for a little bit. Let's have a look. Let's see. That's it, good. Mm, okay. Good, let's just carry on. So try and notice that the arc should feel very like very natural from the body. Okay, so I don't want to push the arc out. Yeah. I also don't want to sort of end up sort of jamming the arc here. So try and feel that the arc is really kind of a natural movement in the body. 
And you should feel that in your back. Yeah? Your back should feel that basically when you swing, that you're relaxed. Yeah? Your back should feel here. You don't want to start stretching your back out yeah? or jamming your body in here. Yeah? This is trying to feel that your back is really part of the front. So your back should really feel that it's part of the front movement. Yeah. Okay. So the moment your back is compromised, your power in the front will be compromised. Yeah. So try and feel that the back is wide. Yeah. There. Yeah. So the arms really begin in the back and don't compromise the back. Yeah. That feeling. So this or pushing out there. You feel I'm, I'm too tense here. Relax back into the body. Yeah. Okay? So just swinging here. Swinging here, swinging here. So I really feel that the movement is just a kind of a swing naturally in the body without stressing the body or jamming the body in any way, yeah? Okay, just try that a few more times. Yeah. yeah. That feeling. Okay, good. So we'll walk again towards the focus. So in this case here, just place the sword. Just place the sword. Just, but don't, don't do the focus yet. Yeah, not the key man. Just place the sword. Yeah, just place the sword here. There. 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 Yeah, try that. No, that's right. Let me have a look at Adrian. That's not bad. Okay. Good. Okay, good. When you place the sword, put your attention in this. Look. Okay, when you finish the sword cut, it should always feel that you're really finishing with the ground under the cut. Yeah. Now, what that means is that your whole structure should feel that it's sitting in the ground. Yeah. So I don't want to have the sense that I've lifted the sword there. I should really be there. Yeah. Okay, so just swing the sword down with a sense of placing it in the ground. Placing it in the ground. Yes, I should have this feeling of being here. Okay, but not being there. Yeah, I really need to be down there. Yeah, okay. This. 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 So my whole structure is just really like sitting there. Yeah, that feeling. Yeah, so just there. There, there, and my body should really feel like it's together, not stretched or pulled in any way. Yeah, let's try that a few more times. So your structure really rests all the way through into the ground. That feeling. Yeah, keep going. <clears throat> okay, so we'll come to the focus. Okay, try and normally when we do the focus, the big problem with the chemo, the focus is that it takes a lot of it, a lot of uh, attention into the arms and throws you into the upper body. Okay, so I want you to do a very light focus. Yeah. Okay, so just come to this position. We've done this, this, and we've done this placing. And now what I want you to do is I want you to just a very there. You see, just gentle, just gentle. But I don't want this to happen that yeah so it shouldn't be really tense my body should stay really low yeah so my energy stays low my energy stays low but it doesn't go forward like that there should be no jump yeah you should stay low in this yeah so a nice light focus kime which keeps you down which keeps you down which keeps you down in the ground here do this feeling yeah i right, try that
Let me see. Okay, no bad. Ah. Is that Gerda? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Gerda. <laughs> okay, I see you. See you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Watch. Look, what I'm seeing quite quite a bit is this. Look, I'm gonna co I'm gonna copy it. Look, what you need to do is is you need to to keep yourself really centered. Look, I don't want to do this pushing forward. I don't want to push forward this way. Yeah. So try and feel that actually that the arc is this. The arc is this, but not that, not pushing forward. So try not to confuse extension with pushing, yeah? So you just come here, but you don't go there. There's no energy going that way. So the paradox is that you're gonna have this extension out, which is not really about movement. It's really about your, your intention, yeah? So the extension is there, and the extension is there, but the extension is not pushing, yeah? So try and keep yourself rooted without losing the extension in movement which is a push yeah i try that again keep it light keep it light this 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 That's good. That's good. Okay, great. Okay, so we're going to continue on a little bit from here. We're going to Zengo Giri. Okay, come on. So back and forth. Okay, so cut. And turn. 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 <laughs> oh my god. Okay, good. Let me look at Adrian. I can hear you when you keep saying that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, look, I don't need to look. I can okay. see everyone doing it. <laughs> okay, look, look. The, the, so basically this idea of staying grounded, keeping your center, contact with the ground, all this is really important. So the, but the, we lift the arms a lot. And, and the major problem with that is that we lift and go into the shoulders and then jam the neck, yeah? So try and feel that when you lift this, that the weight stays underneath. The weight is like kind of like hanging underneath. So the feeling is that there's like weights under your elbows, that they're like heavy, yeah? So the spiral of the rotation and this, Weight underneath. Weight underneath. Weight underneath. So do this slower and really coordinate this movement with this. This with this. This with this. It doesn't mean that you don't rise because you're making rotation, but the weight stays underneath. Yeah, this is the key thing. So try and really feel that this, this movement underneath, and then cut. This movement underneath and then cut, underneath, underneath, underneath. So real slow, slow it down, boom. And keep your weight kind of hanging in the body. Try that, yeah? Okay, slow. Okay, slowly, underneath. Slowly, underneath. Slowly, underneath. Slowly, underneath. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's changed. Okay, good. I can see that now. <clears throat> oh. 
Okay, one thing that can really help this feeling is, is to really, when you make, when, as soon as the sword is in motion, your hands are really soft, yeah? So as soon as I move, my hands really become soft. Yeah, I'm not really holding the sword so much, yeah? This. My hands are very soft. So there's a grip, but it's very light. If you're holding the sword too tight, you, you jam all this up, energy up here. So make the arms soft, make the hands soft while you move. So while you move the sword, okay, soft. Soft, soft, so this feeling here versus that feeling there. So you're not gripping the sword, you're just letting it rest in your hands, that kind of feeling, yeah? Okay, so try and soften the handwork while the sword moves, okay? And at the focus point, focus, and then release. Focus, and then release. Focus, and then release. Focus, that feeling, yeah, try that. Handwork. I will do some handwork today in mm. Tajutsu. What time is it? It's half past. Already? Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> okay, that looks better. Keep the sensation in your body of draining down to the ground constantly. Yeah? Even as you move different muscle groups and you raise the sword. Good. Adrian, that's better. Great. Good. Good. Okay, good. We're going to go to number seven. We're going to go to number seven. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just do the same thing back and forth. Yeah. Okay, so you just do from a showman and then just spiral into a speed. Yeah. Okay, showman. Spiral into a speed. Show men, spiral into a ski. So I want you to do this real slow and connect the sword. So really try and feel that the sword only moves because your center and whole body is moving it. So here, okay, move your body, move your body, drop the center, yeah? Okay, and you're in this situation here and then spiral the hip and take it out, yeah? Okay, so this, this. This, this. This, this, this. Yeah, just try that. Number seven, slowly on the spot. Really fusing the sword movement to the body movement. Let me have a look. Okay. Okay. Okay, watch this, look. Okay, number seven, everything in Aikido is, is really gonna be some kind of spiral movement. So we're gonna do a little bit of body work later to focus on that. So when you've done your showman here, okay, the sword does this, okay? The sword does that. So the sword is really gonna follow a spiral here, yeah? Okay, so don't do this, where it just stays straight and then pushes forward, yeah? Okay, so it's not just that, yeah? Okay, it's much more here, this, there. Yes, yeah? so it goes through a spiral, yeah? Okay, and that spiral is really what's happening in the hips, this movement, yeah? Okay, <coughs> that, okay? So the sword will spiral in that movement. So you're gonna spiral into the ski, yeah? I right, try that again. That's it. Good, 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 good.
Okay, we're going to add a couple more movements to this exercise, just to, just to finish it up a little bit. Okay, so, okay, okay, cut, ski, back, and finish. So it's four movements now, yeah? Okay, so just four movements, yeah? Okay, so here, okay, showman, ski, roll back into a, this movement here. And then stepping forward into Yokomichi number five. Yeah? So four movements. Yeah? Okay, so together. So itch knee some she and then back. Yeah? Okay. Kamai. Itch knee. Some chi and then back. Okay, okay again. Itch me some chi and then back. Good, go ahead. Just do those four movements. Let me have a look. Ah, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> ah. Okay, watch. Okay, so, okay, try and feel that, the, that you're working again. So the reason I chose this movement is because Movement number three really emphasizes the spiral quality of the movement that you're looking for. Look. Okay, so when I come to this position here, and I've done the ski, I don't want to make the rotation like this. This is much too stiff, yeah? Okay, so what I'm looking for is much more the sense that I'm in the center. So this, here, you see? Okay, so what you do is you rotate there, yeah? So it's, it's a very elastic spiral. So when you make the turn, at this point here, okay, really begin and let the sword follow. Okay, then the same thing, move the body and cut down, yeah? So number three really is an amplified spiral and it really makes that movement super clear, yeah? Okay, let's do it again together. Okay, slowly, okay. Okay, center drops. Center spirals forward. Center spirals round. Center goes forward in a spiral and drops. And then you come back into position. Okay. Kamai. Enter drops. Spirals forward. Spirals round. Forward and drop. And then you're back again. Yeah, I try that. Put that quality in. <clears throat> Good, that's better, much better. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, much better. Okay, so look, there's two, there's, the, there's, there's, if you tighten things up too much, you strangle the spirals. If you open the spirals up too much, you lose the connections, yeah? Okay, so you need something which is basically spiral but connected. So when you do these movements, when you especially do number three, okay, for example, this basically means I've lost the spiral. It's disconnected, yeah? Okay, okay. this means it's too rigid, okay? Something in between where I have the connection, but I have the spiral at the same time. And then I can move, yeah? So that is the middle place, yeah? So you don't want to be here, you don't want to be there. You want to be somewhere in between where everything is connecting up. So that feeling. So look for the spiral, but keep the sword in place with the body. 
don't let the body finish and then the sword continue out somewhere over there yeah so they're still fused together but they're fused in a spiral movement yeah i try that Okay, we'll finish it off, just to finish off with six movements. <laughs> so this is kind of like a mini six kata, yeah? Okay, so... Ich, ni, san, chi, go. And then coming back into kamai. So this is just six movements that you can just change in directions, yeah? Okay, let's do that together. So... Ich, ni, San, Chi, Go, and come on. Itch, Ni, San, Chi, Go, and come on. Itch, Ni, San, she go and come on at your own tempo try that let's see if that last movement works they can't really see what i did i think it's tricky okay uh -huh. i'm going to show it from the other side watch okay okay so from the back okay so all these movements are kind of like ro big, big rotations and big spiral work. So <clears throat> from the beginning here, then I go there, then I spiral there here. I go into the cut there. Okay, then I move, then I move left hand releases and goes this way. It goes into a kind of a koku position there. Okay, it takes the sword, comes back here. Again, I'm rooted underneath. I'm not pulled up, I'm underneath. And then here, of course, you could do a cut to finish off. But you can also just from this position here just go back into Kamai. Yeah, that position there. Yeah? So just go back into Kamai for the moment. Okay? So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I try that. Okay, we'll say one last thing about this kind of work. Okay, so when we do Suburi work, which is basically what we've been doing the last few months with all the Zooms and, and, and all the everyone training at home, this is an incredible opportunity to work on, on, on structure, on how your body moves and working on the principles of solo work, on the body work, which is really about how you organize your movement and your relationship with the ground. Okay, so especially when you do sword, there's this weight in front of your body and it's really challenging to keep your, the integrity, especially of the shoulders and not to rise up. So with this one, really try and be conscious of what's happening in the shoulder domain, yeah? Okay, so when I do this, of course the shoulders are moving, but they stay within the body. The moment they start going up here or they start going over there, okay, the body starts breaking up out of the spine. So, okay, here, okay, shoulders in place. Here, shoulders in place. Here, Shoulders in place, here, shoulders in place, here, shoulders in place, here, shoulders in place. And the feeling is that my whole structure is constantly finding the ground and moving from the ground. Yeah? So especially when you do that movement at the end, when you do this one and you rotate here, be careful you don't like this. But actually you should be 
Okay, how much time we got left? We got 20, just under 20 minutes. 17 minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'd like to do a little bit of body work. So we'll put the bookings aside. I'm going to show something. <clears throat> okay. So we have three basic movements, which we have in Taino Henko Morote Dori Kokiho and Suwari Waza Kokiho. Now, there's a way of combining these into a solo work. Yeah, I'm just going to show you first and then I'm going to take you through. Again, it's in six. Yeah, this number six is, is interesting. Okay, so watch. Okay, Taino Henko. Rolling back. Kokyu ho. Dropping, rotating, kokyu. And then you turn and you're on the other side. Okay, then you go to the other side. You roll back here. Throw, rotate, and then you change position there. Yeah? So this involves three basic exercises we have. Standing and linking them together as a solo exercise in six movements. Okay. We're going to start with the very first part, Taino Henko. Yeah? So just with your right foot forward in, in a hammy, hand. Okay, now again, really try and feel the arcs and the spirals in this. So you, you initiate the movement from the center, there. So your axis is in this position here. And then just roll back, bringing the hand to you. And again, in another arc, yeah, in another arc in the body. So this is really a study of connecting the body in arcs, in spirals, yeah? All Aikido is really about that, yeah? Okay, so here, right foot forward again, spiral back. Roll back into the body there. Okay, leave your hand where it is. <clears throat> now we go to the other side. Left hand forward. Each knee back. Right hand comes out. Each knee and back. Left hand comes out. Each knee. Right hand comes out. Each knee and back. Left hand out. Each knee and come back. 
Yeah, so just work on that. Tino Henko, both sides for the moment. <clears throat> if you have any questions about anything, you can ask, huh? <clears throat> Especially because it's difficult to see, I think, what I'm doing most of the time. Okay. Okay, look, okay, so again, everything, <clears throat> all of what we're gonna do, these, all these movements we're doing are really based on the sword work we've been doing, look. Okay, when we did this thing about the cut, all the cuts finish in the ground. This is the idea of the finish in the ground. So the hips, the ground, the structure finishes there. So when we do this first movement in Taino Henko, it's very important that this has a sense of being in the ground, yeah? So you're in the ground here, this, this, this feeling, yeah? Don't have the hands out here like that. So sort of place them like this. Yeah. So as you do this spiral, you drop, and then here. Okay. You're in the ground. As you pull back center, and then again, it stays in the ground. Yeah. So the arm work and the body work is like they're kind of resting in the ground constantly. Yeah. So here, this. Now here, don't go back and do something like that. Yeah. Because then you're basically losing the the ground work. Yeah. Okay. So this this yeah everything stays together and everything stays down yeah i try that <clears throat> good that's better good yeah the, it's as if the the hands are resting in the ground that's feeling Okay, watch. The one thing about the handwork, which is really important, and this is something I learned, I, I, I learned uh, from, actually Kayla Feder made this point once in the seminar, I thought it was brilliant. Okay, the hand is, when you look at the hands, it has a kind of a feeling of being there. So the base of the hand is as if it's sitting in the ground. The fingers spread out, they spread out. And here, it's as if you could put a drop of water and it would stay there. So the hand is not this, the hand is that. The hand is that. And of course, this connects to the elbow, which connects to the hip, which connects to the lower structure. Doom! That feeling. In case you're in this position, but you're not in that position. You're in this position. So you have a combination of being grounded and extended. Yeah? So this is this marvelous expression of what we're trying to do with our whole body. Grounded and expanded at the same time. Yeah? And this is right there in the hands. There. Yeah? If you're only doing this, you're crunching them in. And if you're doing this, you're spreading out. But you need the ground and the up, the down and the up. Yeah? Okay, we're going to continue a little bit from here where we are. Yeah? So, next step. Taino Henko. Roll back into this position here. So, you're in a spiral as if someone is already holding you here. Okay? Now, you make this movement and then there's a slight drop in your structure. This. This. And you rotate into Kokyu Ho. Then you raise, roll the hip, and again, cork you here, there, and then you're in this position there. Yeah, so this is a classic cork you nage position, okay? So we'll go back to the right foot, okay? So spiral back, spiral back, dropping your structure, finding the extension forward. Raising from the hip, raising from the hip, rolling, and then, Settling here again. Yeah. Okay. Back to the right foot. Okay. Itch. Knee. Some. Chi. So this position four now. Okay. Okay. Again on the right side. Itch. Knee. Dropping. That sensation of dropping, rotating. Rising, dropping with expansion. Okay, back to the right foot. 
iç ni sam chi okay now stay on the left foot forward and you're facing the other direction we're going to go the other direction okay so itch ni sam chi and you're on your right foot forward okay itch ni sam chi and you're on your left foot forward itch ni sam chi and you're on your right foot forward itch ni sam chi and on your left okay continue that way back and forth taino henko morote dori kokiho combined ah there we go there we go okay right right look okay try and try and think that you're com everything you're doing with body work now is based on swords so really think about morote dori kokiho when I do this movement we did before, where I raise the sword. We did this exercise before, right? Okay, so this turning and raising the sword is the same as Kokyu Ho. That means my elbow will be down. My elbow will not rise up. Now, I know that this is a, a common cheat that we do in more where we actually start pushing with the elbow, but you need to think that this is sword work. So I need to connect the elbow with the hand to drive the whole body through it. So this position, okay? So when I'm in this position, this position. Okay? But not that position, not that position. Okay, the elbow needs to be in place. Now, the reason I'm really uh, fanatic about this is because I'm trying to make connections in the body and organize the whole periphery of the body around the center work. So the direct, the connection elbow to hip is really important. The moment the elbow starts pushing out, that connection breaks and you're going to the shoulders and the arms. So this is really what you don't want to work, yeah? So watch one more time. So I'm in this position here, I go back, Okay, now here, this drops and it's this. But don't not drop and just go here. Yeah? Okay, so try and find the sense that when someone grabs you, remember we have this sense of dropping in the grip. So you drop and then turn. And then the L, this connection is in place. And then raising the hip again, and then rolling into a spiral here again, and then dropping. Mm. Yeah? So this is where you, the whole body is knitted together in spiral work, organized by the intention of the center to motivate that, yeah? Okay, let's do this together from the right hand one more time. Focus on that point if you can. Itch. Ni. Sam. Chi. Other side. Itch. Ni. Sam, she, and continue. Let's have a look. Difficult, huh? <laughs> okay, good. Good, much better. Yeah, this gets you more in place. Okay, now one other point before we go to the last part of the exercise, the five and six, is when you're in this position here with Kokyu here, okay, really try and feel that that, that moment there, you're going to raise the hip. So that movement of doing this. So again, it's not that all of a sudden I just raise and just go like that. Yeah. Okay, so you're in this position here and then you raise, you raise, so the hip rolls, the hip rolls and the hands roll. Yeah, and then drop and then drop and try and feel that you stay connected don't sort of go over there somewhere yeah so that's a kind of a difficult part uh, i'll share it with actually with my thoughts. okay if we look at morote dori yeah okay so this dropping here okay now this that movement you see okay it's very common to just push back here but this is also a spiral this is also a spiral yeah okay so you're in position here and try and feel that the next movement again originates in the hip. This, 
this and then boom, as if you're dropping a big weight into the ground yeah and again the weight is underneath yeah okay work one through four okay let's do it together a little bit more itch me some she and itch me some she at your own tempo try that you take a fall on the ground? Sure. <laughs> okay, watch this, watch this. Okay, you know, when we do coke, you, the, the big part, a lot of you, when you're doing this last part, is a very asymmetric position with a big twist. It's very easy to just lose the arms. But try and feel that you're we're doing taijutsu. So if you actually throw someone to the ground and he holds on, okay, so I go there and, and, and I lose myself there, he will just pull me over. He will just pull me over, yeah? Okay, so you need to do this kind of strange asymmetrical position with a sense of being grounded in it. So that there, and as he goes to the ground, boom, I'm there with him. Yeah, he's not, if I just do this, he's just gonna pull me over, yeah? Okay, so when you do that last position here, try and feel that you are versus, yeah? Okay, again, in a very strange twist, still centered and organized, yeah? Just try a few more before we finish off. <clears throat> That's it, Adrian. Good, good. Dealer, good, good. Okay, so for those of you who've been in Iwama. <clears throat> Uh, you know that in Iwama there's a statue of Osensei, and it's the statue of him finishing off in a kokyunage. And for me, this is actually marvelous because because when you looked at Saito Sensei or you looked at, at uh, of the of the photos of this statue of Saito of Osensei, what you see is a big spiral opening up. Yeah, so this is like really a big spiral, and what you see is the spiral expanding out and going. And so this is something which is like a kind of a vortex coming out of the ground. But the last part is still rooted in the ground. And this is where the spiral is very visible, yeah? So this is one of the biggest spirals we have and therefore one of the easiest to lose in terms of connection. Yeah, so just to, so that to actually to practice this solo and to refill, you're connected there, you're connected there, and you're connected there. And the whole, the axis is still in place, even in the twist. And this is actually a kind of a wonderful feeling when you can get it, okay. I want to finish off with the last two to you now, when we do suwai waza kokiho, what we do is we, we go down and then we, we do something like this. So this is a kind of a variation on that panel. Okay, so we begin with right foot forward. Itch. Knee. Dropping. Sun. Into the spiral here. Now, if I'm really in the center of the spiral here, I just turn positions and then that's it. I change hands and then just that switch there. Okay? So for me to be able to do this without waving my spine or, or compensating in the, out of it, if I finish Kokiho spiral but centered, I'll be able to just switch into Kokiho easily without making any adjustments. And that's actually the tricky part, yeah? Okay, so right foot forward again, okay? Itch, ni, san, shi, Go. And your handwork is rooted right in your back foot. Yeah? So you like have a triangle going through your whole body. Yeah? Okay, one more time, right foot forward. Here. Itch. Ni. Sam. Shi. Go. Okay, go back to the right hand, right foot forward. Itch, ni, sam, 
Chi. Go. Going back to the right foot forward. Ich. Ni. Sam. Chi. Go. Okay, just try that on the right side for the moment before we do both sides. Go ahead. Just one sided for the moment. Six movements. Ah, okay, watch, watch. Okay, good. Okay, let me see. Okay, look. Uh, I'm in I'm in Kokyu Ho. There. Okay, now my extension is full. I'm trying to see if I can show this. Look. Okay, I'm in extension here. Okay, now watch. My extension stays, 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 stays. Yeah? Okay, from this angle here, I mean there. Stays, 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 stays. There. Yeah? So what I'm doing is I'm changing on the spot, but the extension stays alive. Boom! And then the hands really rooted in the back, the back foot. So I'm creating a triangle. Yeah? So... Try not to do this, that you do this, and then you lose the extension, and then you push out, yeah? Try and feel that you have the extension, the extension, boom, yeah? So I go from one position to another position, but the extension stays completely alive, yeah? That kind of feeling. Okay, let's try one more time together. <coughs> right foot forward, itch, ni, sam, chi, Go, and Rook is just changing hand, changing, changing, so you go to the left side. So now you're in the same starting position, but you've changed. So now you're in position six. So the other side, left foot forward. Itch, ni, sam, chi, go, Rook. Changing feet and changing sides. So then you're... Now you so now we're going both sides now, yeah? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Each me. Some she go. Rock. Each. Ni. Sam. She. Go. Rock. Each. Ni. Sam. She. Go. Rock. Good, carry on, try that. Both sides, six moves. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there. Yeah. Switch legs. That's it. Good, good. Okay, now one more point. Okay, now this is actually also like what we see that also when we do techniques or when we do suburi, you see that we have a lot of emphasis naturally on the suburi. And there's not so much emphasis really taught, although I teach it quite a bit, on, on just the Kamai positions. So where you start from when you're at rest and not doing anything will decide what you do when you move. So this is an incredibly important starting point. So the Kamai position is really full. Yeah. So when I make this exercise finishing in with number six, number six, which returns to starting point is as important as all the other moves. It returns you to zero again. Yeah. Okay. So for example, we're in this position here, and then the rotation is just this. But I don't finish here and then let go and then get back to starting point. So try and think that the starting point has as much value 
as the whole sequence. So this is one to five in terms of movement and returning to back to zero, returning back to starting point is six. Yeah. So really put this feeling and then return full. Yeah, your body is still connected. You're totally present in your body. Yeah. Okay, let's just do this one more time. Okay, right foot forward. Itch. Knee. Some. She. Go. Go. Itch. Knee. Some. She. Go. Go. Okay. So. Um, I think that's it, right? Do, uh, do you have any questions about anything we did? <laughs> <laughs> any questions before we stop? <laughs> Look, what's really important, if you, if you do this exercise, you should really feel that this whole rotation work, and, and in a way, this is really way, and it's not so much this movement as what it means for the body. Okay, this is a spiral running through your whole body. So just doing this without the body doesn't make any sense. It's got to be hands forward, elbow. And this has to allow that the upper body is a gate area. It allows that to go through, but it doesn't take it over. Yeah? Okay, so spiral work, whatever you do, iriminage, taino henko, kokyu ho, sankyo. Yeah, this is all kodega eshi. It doesn't matter what you do, shiho nage. Yeah, it's all based on spiral work. Yeah? And that really begins with the most basic exercise we have, which is really Taino Henko Moroto Dori Shimono and a just one cut, which contains all the movements. So the root of everything we do is just a shominuchi. Okay. <laughs> I've taken away your questions. <laughs> do you have any questions? Sorry about that. I have one wish. What's one that? Wish. <laughs> one wish. It is possible, Michael, that you can uh, make a condensed video from from Lewis from the from the last cocky movement and from the 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 Bokken set with the cut. So we have this in the condensed form. Sure. Sure. Whatever you want. Okay. Cool. But, uh, but I'm going to say one more thing. <laughs> Everything I've done here, I've taught to him. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just visiting here. Okay? <laughs> Michael knows everything. <laughs> so all the stuff I did today, he's seen before many times. Yeah, because for me this is basic practice. This is basic, and making up the sword uh, six count kata on the spot for you guys this morning is just for fun. Yeah, but then you should just do it and forget it. Yeah, those things <laughs> make up on the spot. Oh. But you never think of the the. The cutters that we don't sure, have for sure. the sword work. So sure. people are inventing yeah, 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 yeah. things and things. Exactly, like exactly. In, in yeah, so I think that we, we should basically be creative. Yeah, so for example, this morning was a very fixed class focusing on relating everything to the cut and to three exercises you know very well, and that Michael has also seen me teach before. And then, and then in the middle, doing a, a sequence cutter of six movements with the sword, which I did because I wanted to emphasize rotations and spirals. So I choose motions which emphasize that. And in a sense, when you make up forms and you develop axes, you should do that in the sense of looking for exercises which work on areas that you're weak and that you want to develop more. And this is actually the whole point. We're not really learning forms. We're incorporating principles into our bodies so that we can use them spontaneously later on without having to think. That's the definition of Takimusu Aiki for this morning. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to, any last questions before we stop? Oh. No? A no. Any more Zoom lessons to come? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> Actually, you're in really good hands. <laughs> no, the, the, one of the reasons I haven't done Zoom is because actually where I'm living at the moment doesn't really have the possibilities for it. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to see how I organize it in the moment. But actually, I don't really feel the need because if I look at the TAE group with, with Michael doing the stuff and then Ariane and Andrea, I mean, they're such great teachers teaching good stuff that I don't feel I have anything to add, really. So that's my excuse. <laughs> it was nice having class from you, though. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed yes, it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Really great. Great. It was great seeing thank you. you. Yes. Great. So Thanks a lot.
Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Luis.